What's up, y'all? It's T-Tar, and today we're going to be talking about the man that brought Ogre Pond to Kitakami. I've gone through the game and wrote down notes on various different things because I haven't seen anyone really talk about this. And so we're going to try to put this together. I'm pretty sure Game Freak is implying something with this character. Even if minor, he's important in some way. So let's go back through the story. The story of the man is he and Ogre Pond were from some faraway region. And they came to Kitakami, where everyone called them ugly. They were terrified of the man in Ogre Pond, so they went to the nearby mountain to hide. But this was a village that had a festival where they wore masks. So there was someone with a kind heart in the village who saw an opportunity for them where they could wear masks and join the festival, which is the mask maker. So he decided to make four masks for Ogre Pond and the man, which are these. But instead of using normal materials, he used the materials the foreign man had on him, which was these terror-like crystals. And out came these brilliant masks that, when they joined the festival, they became the main attention. People couldn't tell it was Ogre Pond and the man, but it didn't seem like they lived with the villagers. They only joined for that festival. So when time came for the next festival, word would spread of these two that carry these masks, and people would flock over to see them. But then eventually, wanting the masks for themselves, a group of greedy Pokemon appear. These three and potentially a fourth. And this must have happened after the festival was over because they were back in the cave in the mountain. It seems Ogre Pond was out for a stroll somewhere, so only the man was there. And while he managed to protect the teal mask, the loyal three stole the other three. And it would be implied that the man ended up dying in that. A couple hours later, Ogre Pond comes back, sees that their little home in the cave is all wrecked. The signs that a battle took place and only the teal mask in its hiding spot. Ogre Pond wore the mask and went back down to the village to look for the man. Since, of course, she needs to hide her face. And instead of finding the man, it found these three hideous Pokemon holding the masks so she could tell what happened and so she freaking beat them up but the funny part about this is ogre pond is a grass type and wearing the grass mask and she beat up three poison type pokemon that have higher base stats than her but when the villagers saw ogre pond murking these three especially since she had her cudgel out so they probably didn't recognize she was one of the two that used to wear the masks they thought this was some kind of bully of an ogre just attacking the village to rob it and that the loyal three had actually protected the villagers it doesn't even seem like ogre pond got her other three masks back she just went back to the mountains and the villagers began this tradition of praying to these three thinking that they were guardians that protected them from the ogre and the tragedy here is that the villagers clearly never found out that Ogre Pond and the man were the ones always behind the masks during the festival. So when they never showed up again, they probably assumed that Ogre killed the two, which made the Loyal Three even more of a hero. And the villagers holding these masks in possession is probably partially in thought to those mysterious people that carried them and brought such vibrancy to their festival. But the irony is in them not realizing who they really were. Why she didn't ultimately get the other three back, I don't know, but I assume she just barely won the fight and had to get out of the village before the villagers you know, joined in the battle because they thought she was the villain. But there's so many questions that come out of the story that I want to talk about each one. So the first one is, who is that foreigner that came to the region? So this foreigner had Terra Crystals with them. And so it would appear that this foreigner is from Paldia. And so I raised the question that maybe this was a member of Heat's crew because it has to be someone who has the Terra Crystals. So let's forget the heat part for a second, right? You can find Terra Crystals on the surface in Paldia. So if he's from Paldia, maybe he was just someone who got them from the surface. But if you look at the history of Paldia as it's told to us, it doesn't seem like there's such a thing as Terra Crystals until 200 years ago. 200 years ago, Heath makes it down to Area Zero for the first time. It's only 140 years ago that the first Terrasilized Pokemon is spotted. So it's like Heath triggered something down there that the game hasn't explained to us. When they try to take these Terrasilized Pokemon out of Area Zero, the light disappeared. And it remained a mystery for a long time until around 10 years ago when Sada and Toro start to crack the mystery on it and invent the Terra Orb. So this would imply that the Terra Crystals we see on the surface of Paldia, which is explained to have formed over the years by energy leaking from the Great Crater into Paldia, would be after that 140 year mark. So pretty much this gives us a proper time range for how far back this man could be from. And it seems like it would cap at around 200 years ago. And so you could explain that maybe this man is from Paldia and he just took those Terra Crystals around 140 years ago from the surface and then moved to Kitakami. 
Or, since these crystals appear to be something special, it would make more sense that he has some kind of role and backstory that has to do with Area Zero, and that these crystals he got from the core of Area Zero. So I like to throw around the idea of what if he is like a member of Heat's original survey team. So this group of people where they show, you know, one of them is clearly Heat, but he has a couple other friends with them. What if that man is one of these? There's also a couple other things to think here. One, when the man and Ogre Pond came to the village, apparently they were both ugly. I don't know how that could happen. I guess I could see how Ogre Pond's ugly just because she's different, right? But the man, like clearly he's a human, right? So either, you know, we have two options here. Either he wasn't a man, he was some kind of Pokemon, but that's a weird option, so we're not gonna go down that. Or the man just had like a weird injury on his face, you know? So that he had to wear the mask as well. Which could make sense if he is from Heat's original team and had to deal with the dangers of Area Zero. You know, you imagine after Heat comes back to the surface that his small team breaks apart and they go and do their own things. So Heat writes his book, this man maybe goes to Kitakami with Ogre Pond. And so to try to figure out a timeline for this, I went through and there's the part in the story where Kieran mentions who the original mask maker was. He says in the old days everyone carried masks wherever they went and the one who made those masks was actually my great 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 grandpa's great 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 grandpa. So I try to do the math on this and if every great is a generation for so 20 years that's 20 20 20 40 20 20 20 40 you know because grandpa's two generations which actually works out to exactly 200 years but he says or something you know. But regardless of what, it would seem these traditions in Kitakami would have to be something relatively new. It can't span back like a thousand years. But yeah, it checks out to the original mask maker being alive around the time of heat. But to double check this, I went to the Japanese version of the game and how Kieran's dialogue plays out and it's different. So in the Japanese version, he pretty much says, it's my grandpa's grandpa's longtime grandpa. Zuto Jichan, they say, which doesn't give us the same time frame. But like I said, it still fits in the last 200 years if he's carrying those Terra Crystals. So let's just play with the idea that this man with the long hair and apparently an ugly face was a member of Heat's original crew, and that's why he's carrying the Terra Crystals. The next question is, what is Ogre Pun? And where did he find it? You know, the way he's walking into the village with Ogre Pun, clearly he's taking care of the Pokemon and more than being its trainer, if you can call it that, it's more like he was playing like a father figure for the Pokemon. But how did he get to the point of taking care of Ogre Pond? It almost makes you think he found Ogre Pond in Area Zero, in their original expedition. But there's not many hints to go on this idea. But he's carrying Terra Crystals, he's brought Ogre Pond with them, and Ogre Pond does have an odd affinity for the Terra Crystals where just by wearing different masks, she's changing her own typing and able to terrestrialize her own version that doesn't even give her a crown. Like these masks are a substitute for the crown. She has her own version of terrestrializing. It would almost make sense she could be from Area Zero and that when the crew originally split up that, he just decided he's gonna take care of her. Remember, there's a lot that he appears to have taken out of his book. There's a lot of information he blacked out. Maybe there's also information on Ogre Pond. You know, they found this little ogre running around in Area Zero, and maybe it protected them, and so they started taking care of it. But to protect Ogre Pond, Heath took all of that out of his book. All right, so we have Heath crew member, he brought Ogre Pond. Next question is, why Kitakami? Like, why did these two stop by Kitakami, get called ugly by a bunch of people, and then just live in the mountains nearby. It doesn't make sense. It, it sounds like you should just go to another region, keep wandering the world until you find a place where you're accepted. Kitakami is very far from Paldia. If Paldia is Spain or the Iberian Peninsula in the real world, Kitakami is in Japan, a bit northern. So there's this much of a gap. Of course, near Kitakami is Hoenn, Sinnoh, Johto, and Kanto. All of which I guess also would have called them ugly. So the only conclusion I can come to is that he didn't just come to Kitakami, he actually traveled with Ogre Pond to various different regions. Maybe he went to Galar, he went to Kalos, then he went over to, J to the Japan regions, and he kept being outcast at him and Ogre Pond, that when he got to Kitakami, he just decided he's gonna live in the mountains nearby. You know, essentially they gave up and decided they're gonna make their own home. There is though one interesting thing about Kitakami, which is the Crystal Lake. 
nothing has really been explained to us about the crystal lake it appears to be the same kind of crystals you find in area zero and the music that plays when you're near that crystal lake is kind of reminiscent of area zero too so maybe there's a shot that if ogre pawn is from area zero that after this man and ogre pawn left Polly and started traveling the world that they took a liking to kitakami because it had that same kind of energy after all if i'm not mistaken oni mountain the very top of it is the crystal lake so it seems like that couldn't maybe not be a coincidence why they chose Kitakami. Alright, and so this brings us to our last point, which is that when it comes to the man, in terms of questioning whether he's really from Area Zero and part of the expedition with Heat, it appears the man isn't just entirely useless, he's a Pokemon trainer. Because when the Loyal 3 jump him, it says that yeah, he held on to the Teal Mask, but the game's wording is that he was not strong enough to protect them all. And when Ogre Pond comes, she finds the place in Ruin, right? So it wasn't just the Loyal 3 jumping him, it sounds like he's a Pokemon trainer. And it sounds like he actually fought back. And since the Teal Mask is shown to be the one he wore, maybe he was even using the mask to some extent. The Terra Orb wasn't invented yet, but you never know if using the mask here, he was able to terrestrialize his Pokemon or something like that. Either way, while he wasn't the strongest, because it appears he lost to the Loyal 3, he was a Pokemon trainer, which kind of puts him in the same camp as like when you see Heath with the Cyclizer. They were basic enough Pokemon trainers to make the trip down to Arizona and come back out. We also don't know if when he wasn't strong enough that he was really weaker than them or if they had some dirty tactics. Because you can at least tell his mind wasn't fully on winning. He was trying to protect one of the masks in the back of his head during this battle. Probably so that Ogre Pond has something to wear to go down to the next village festival each year. So one, he was jumped by three Pokemon. Two, he wasn't fully into the fight. And three, we don't know if <laughs> the Loyal 3 did some dirty tactics. And this kind of brings me to my ultimate final point, which is that maybe it wasn't just the Loyal 3. Maybe Peach Boy Momotaro was there too. Think about it. The cutscene shows... A group of greedy Pokemon came. Well, where did they come? They clearly weren't there, gawking over the masks when Ogre Pond came down and killed them. He must have appeared earlier in this tale, as in, he must have been a part of the group that jumped the man in the Oni Mountain Cave. Maybe the real reason this man lost to these loyal three when Ogre Pond with the mask was able to beat them is because he wasn't just fighting the loyal three, he was fighting their leader too. And if the leader is no longer around, maybe he actually killed the leader. And so these three ran off with the masks instead of getting the fourth one because they just lost their leader and they decided to run off and started freaking holding it up in the village. And so Ogre Pond comes back a few hours later, sees just the cave in ruins, the teal mask somewhere on the floor, and she goes down and kills the other three. And that peach left over in Peachy's shop could be a hint that the fourth legendary was here on the day that the man was jumped by the loyal three and so i guess the last thing left for ogre pond to do not that she wants vengeance is if that fourth loyal legendary ever gets resurrected or turns out to be alive somehow she needs to be the one to kill him you know in the second dlc whether kieran has that loyal legendary or not i think the game should force us to have to use ogre pond when we're fighting him and she gets her last redemption match against him for killing the original a man that she came with to Kitakami. Anyhow, that's my video. Make sure y'all shank that like button. Let me know your thoughts below. Maybe there'll be some hint of who this man was in the second DLC. Especially if Briar's got Heat's original manuscript. Maybe she's got pages of the original crew members. And even if the game doesn't directly tell us, you'll subtly be able to see someone with long hair as one of his crew members. And then we'll know that this man was him. And yeah, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. I'll see y'all there.